Ever performed at was at San Tropez. Right. Wow. Can you imagine? Everybody was dying <laughs> trying to get to San Tropez, France <laughs> yes. now. Yes. We were so young, like 1920. Sure. It was really kind of literally foreign to us right. 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 when we got Truly. there right. and all the uh, landing in Paris and getting from the mm-hmm. Paris to the train. And right. it was schlepping, getting all of our bags and everything. And then landing in, uh, I think we were either in Cannes or Nice right. to get to San Tropez and taking the bus. Right. Everybody going down there and then this little alley and these places we had to stay there were like two or three of us in the room right. in the bathroom down the hallway <laughs> oh like, my god what the hell yeah, they sent us all the way here to come back we're trying to go like, up no really time okay. what is this place but it worked out we played in one of the finest best places there it's called Hotel Biblos mm. which is still around it was called Club um, the the Biblos Hotel and Club, I uh, can't even think of the name of it, but anyway, it was a really wonderful club there. Mm-hmm. All the Ritzy Rich people came there mm-hmm. and they loved us. Yes. As a result, we ended up going back and forth to Europe and there for many, many years. I was That's in the beautiful. singing group. <laughs> it was very wonderful traveling and just having a great time and a great experience yes. in yes. Europe. Right. Uh, yeah, we had an eight bad. piece yeah. band. Right. Yeah. Right. Can you imagine? And it was a good group. It, I mean, you right. all had some good songs. And, and when I think them. about it, John, he pulled off 
off incredible feats, right. just getting us to these places. Right. We had a great road manager, Tony Lido, right. and Tony was with one of John's other groups from Mavericks called the Seven Souls, right. but he took us all around, and it, it was just amazing. Right. I can't wait to get back to Europe. Sure. I want to take my husband. I haven't right. been in sure. quite some time, but just right. to go back and revisit I mean, yeah. we went to Italy, Germany, Spain, Belgium, Sweden, Switzerland, Africa, Asia. <laughs> Paris was our second home. You have been on road Oh, my God. Right? Yes, well, sir. I feel and wonderful. You, and you also had a song from Smokey, if I'm not mistaken, and then <laughs> no, it kind well, of went to the we group. Love Smokey no, so actually, sure what, what happened, 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 what mm-hmm. happened was. What happened was. <laughs> <laughs> the, we were with Motown, actually. Right, right. We signed with Motown. And um, the Miracles, um, Billy Griffin mm-hmm. had just taken over for Smokey Robinson with yeah. the Miracles. Yes. Oh, Smokey left. Yes. And they love the love machine. Oh, my yeah. God. We yeah. work with Hal yeah. Davis. We work with Norman Whitfield, right. wow. Stevie Wonder. We yeah. recorded with him. Right. And uh, so the Miracles uh, loved us, and they knew all about us and our energy, and they knew John and what have you. Right. And they wrote the song for us, mm-hmm. about us. Right. And they presented it to, and I've heard a couple of different stories, but I think presented it to Barry or either Suzanne DePass. Right. Yes. And when Barry uh, heard it, he's like, Mm-mm, that song is too good. You guys are going to sing that song. Mm-hmm. And Billy right. was like, no, man, that's for the girls, you know. Right. And Barry's like, well, the girls are kind of fading out of the realm of what's happening with the group in the Motown. You guys need that song. That's your hit. Right. Mm-hmm. Literally, yes. the rest is history. It was right. their hit. Don't you yeah. know that to this day, every time I hear it, we cringe. Wow. I mean, I don't care if we could have been a like, <laughs> one hit sure. wonder from sure. that you song. It's such it. a magnificent song yeah. right. for us, about us. Right, right. I and mean, I should say, The Love Machine. Yeah, just so we're and clear. I won't work just for nobody but you. That right. was for about yeah. John. I'm just a love machine, a hug and kiss and thing. But we'd always do it on our show, obviously. That became one of our signature songs. But yeah. Wow. And then as we pivot and we go into TV and film, The Price is Right. How did you get there? Well, The Price is Right (laughs) actually came at a really interesting time in my life. I had kind of just gotten married in 88. Okay. I uh, had a son in 89, All right. and it was like in latter part of 89, well, my son, yeah, that my, well, actually 90, that my manager, agent, Judith Fontaine, called mm. me, and she said, Kathleen, Kathleen, <laughs> she said, they're looking for a beautiful black woman to go on The Price is Right. Yes. There were already three existing models on the show. You know, okay. they had been there forever. Right. And I had actually seen, you know, watched The Price is Right all the time. I kind of really claimed and prayed for and aspired to do something like that right. because uh, being in the industry and acting and modeling and singing and all of that and mm-hmm. having a family, I swear to God, I prayed. I said, Lord, mm-hmm. I want a nice little job position after right. I've had my son. Right. I don't want to work every day. Give me <laughs> sure. something maybe three, six hours a day. Make it easy. I, I don't want to have to <laughs> learn any dialogue exactly. and right. go through a lot of hoops and jump. Forward. And lo and behold, that opportunity mm-hmm. came. Mm-hmm. And I had just had my son three months after that. Wow. Right. But I was in shape because, mm-hmm. you know, in this business, your body and your face are your yes. passport. Everything. If you're not prepared, you can miss the opportunity just like that, just wow. because you weren't prepared. Okay. So I, I pretty much worked out, and I was have just a little bit of baby fat. But after three months, right. I went on the audition, and they wanted us to wear a swimsuit. Right. Uh, out of my <laughs> tightest, blackest <laughs> baby suit I could find, right? <laughs> and and I uh, did that, and they liked me and invited me back to do a couple of shows on air. Of course, they saw about 200, 300 other models right. and things of that nature. But, you know, I, and I attribute this once again to having been with the love machine, John Daniels, because Diane... Holly and Janice, Mm -hmm. you know, they're pretty much my age. And they had a couple of other very young models and girls Mm -hmm. trying out. They were a little green under the thumb, a little naive. I I just felt very confident knowing I was a world traveler and I was able to communicate and talk to those girls like, hey, I've been there, did this, done that. At some, at, at some point, I found out I was a little bit too braggadocious. Okay. I had a 
really? Well, really? Back in. <laughs> back up, <laughs> sister-in-law. My sister-in-law actually worked for Mark Goodson Productions, mm-hmm. Don Howard, mm-hmm. at the time, and she she was kind of reporting, say, Kathleen, well, you know, be a little more humble. Right. I'm like, okay, because I'm like, I got this. Hey, I'm <laughs> fine. Yeah, I've been to Europe, anywhere. Hi, Diane Jensen, Holly. But, it, you know, it worked right. out, and I finally got the job, and I was there. 10 years Mm -hmm. from 1990 to 2000. I watched you. I was just like, oh my God, I love her. As a matter of fact, (laughs) I wrote a book. Yes. Oh my God. And it's called Backstage Backstage at the Price is Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to read it. Memoirs of a Barker Barker Beauty. Beauty. I love that. Yes. And this is for you. Thank you. And I will give it to you and sign it afterwards. I actually wrote this book, it came out in 2014. Mm -hmm. But, you know, books are current. I mean, they stay relevant. They do. I mean to say relevant if they're important. And this was important to me because actually uh, Janice and I were both terminated. They won't mm. say we were terminated. They were. They said we were let go because they were changing the format. Oh, Fremantle mm. came in and CBS. And it was mm. kind of a really messy situation how right. we were let go. Right. And Janice had been there 29 years. Wow. I was there 10. Right. How do you, especially for her, I was. I felt bad for her because how do you let somebody go after 29 years, no goodbye, right. no right. watch, no right. party, Pen. no sayonara, you know, because right. those, the people there, the crew and the cast and mm. a they production were company, they're right. family. Yeah, all yes. the time. I couldn't believe it when we got sure. let go and I went home. I cried right. my eyeballs out so oh hard in the parking lot at CBS. I couldn't even leave the parking lot. It took me 15 minutes to try to get over. And then I was driving in the car. I straightened up and started doing that (laughs) ugly cry again. If anybody had looked over at me. Nothing like the ugly cry, right? What's wrong with this lady? Oh, my God. Pain and passion was in It hurt so badly. But, you know, we settled out of court Mm -hmm. because it wasn't done properly. Right. And I had to sign an NDA, uh, well, prohibiting me to say or talk about it for several years. Right. But it was still stewing inside of me yeah, and the of anger course. and all the resentment. And, right. But I do believe once, every, you know, when the, one door mm-hmm. opens and the, uh, closes, one opens. And yes. so a couple of the little good things had happened to me over a period of time. But I took a little time off to take care of my mom. She was uh, convalescing and I, I did take care of her before I got back in the business. But all, all along... I wanted to tell my story. Right. It's not my biography by right. any means, but it right. encompasses the 10 years right. that I was on The Price is Right. And a okay. lot of things that went on behind the yes, stage and some good juicy <laughs> things. things. And you know and how people were know treated. Sure. And you know, there was a lot of uh, dissension back sometimes and mm-hmm. a lot of uh, people were uh, only very few black. You know, the diversity wasn't like it should have been, right. especially right. in the crew and what have you. Right. But that's one of the reasons I was hired mm-hmm. right. in 1990 because exactly. they needed more diversity yes. on C- CBS daytime television shows. Right. That's right. when all of the young and the restless and the bold and the beautiful and everybody, uh, Victoria Raul started right. then and right. uh, oh, um uh, oh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Oba Bowen Tunde. No, not Oba. No, he wasn't. No, uh, no. I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, oh my God, SWAT. My my my, my fine SWAT guy. Uh, oh my God. Oh, it's going to hit me. Come on. I love it. Shamar Moore. Oh, Shamar. Oh, oh, yes. Shamar, he's a, such a flirt. Yeah. I used okay. to love, and you know, uh, uh, St. John was there, uh, yeah. my boy who. Well, he died, but you know, a lot of the people I met would see them going down the uh, hallways and the commissary right. and everything. And I go over next door to find out, see what the newest, latest things going on. But right. with the prices, I mean, um, the bold and the beautiful, yeah. because we actually were able to see it in our dressing rooms oh, with it. the monitor up right. there. We right. see it in real time as right. they were taping, taping on right. the. If we wow. went to the right the uh, feed, feed, right. right. Yes, yes. So uh, I was like way ahead of everybody else. <laughs> Just, to go over and tell my mother, my brother, like, let me going tell on. you what happened to Miss <laughs> Chancellor today. <laughs> I'm watching what they're doing. I love it. I love it. And speaking about an amazing opportunity that came out of it was a young man that happened to be watching you on that show and wanted you to be in his movie. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, that would be uh, Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he, uh, they were doing Friday. Uh, my agent actually called me and said, Kathleen, uh, you're supposed to go on an interview. Uh, they're doing this movie. 
And uh, can you make it? Because actually with The Price is Right, I was still on The Price is Right at the oh, time. Okay. And we would tape three shows a day, wow. tape three days a week. And mm -hmm. we were off a week. Right. Can you imagine That's, only working right. nine days a week? Right. <laughs> but we, we put the time right. in. Right. So uh, it was really frowned upon with mm -hmm. us to even try to work and right. do Something other else. shows sure. and movies. Right. Which you would think at that point there was a, there were enough models sure. that they could we could take you know, over for Cover. each other and sure. do the um, showcases and different things. But they were like, really not, you Exclusive. know, which was kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, but I snuck out and went on that in interview, I think it was lunchtime or something, or mm -hmm. either I said I was sick or I'll be there later or whatever. I right. wasn't going to miss that <laughs> when I found out a little bit about it. Right. So, of course, Ice Cube was there and, they, you know, I had little sides and everything and I just, you know, I nailed it. Well, wasn't yeah, obviously much to say. Hello, <laughs> hi, boys. I know, da, da, da. But um, to come to find out, Ice Cube did um, ask for me. He says, uh, I want that black lady on The Price is Right. <laughs> I didn't have a name then. I was a okay. black, black lady, lady on The Price is Right, <laughs> I love which it. is okay with me because sure. I'd go in the grocery store and walking around right. and different things. Be and yourself. People say, Ain't you that black lady on the Price is Right? I said, yeah, that's me. I'm the black lady on the Price is Right. <laughs> so it worked out, obviously. Wow. And, you know, that whole um, cast and mm -hmm. what have you for Friday became such a phenomena and iconic movie. Yes. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Oh, my God. <laughs> it was just incredible to be a part of that and all that it has really done for everybody that was on that um, in the movie and right. gone on to greater fame for the most part. Definitely. Okay, so I know I've been seeing you on TV in some of these TV series. I tune into Amazon Prime and I see a, I was like, oh my God, Kathleen is here. She's here. Tell us about some of the shows that you actually have been starring in in the past two years or so. Well, okay, uh, let me start with a... Um, a, a day, a day of trouble. That was a movie, mm -hmm. yes, and that was um, directed by Mark Casey. Okay, and uh, he starred in it as well. I did that with Thais Walsh mm -hmm. and uh, um, Hawthorne James, mm -hmm. uh, right. and it was really a good movie. It was really pretty well done, I, I must say. And that I did. I was uh, the mother to uh, one of uh, to Mark Casey actually, and. Uh, told a pretty good story at the end of the day, you know. Mm -hmm. It had a good essence to it and moved pretty well. Right. I did that, and then I did a a, a series, a, a House Divided. Yes, yes. I like that. Right. Uh, I like that. Actually, show. I House started Divided. out the very first season, the very first episode, mm -hmm. wow. and I was the matriarch of the family. Yes. And uh, this young lady. Demetria McKinney, mm -hmm. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Not for real, Demetria, you know, in the movie. In the, yeah, 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 yeah. She was seeing my husband. We were wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people. Yes. I mean, multi hundred millions of dollars. We lived <laughs> at this beautiful place, oh my God, where we shot actually in Malibu. Right. It was like an $80 million home. I love it. You right. can see forever. And that was our home. Right. And this young lady, she just went into the bank and swept my husband off his feet. I knew yeah. and heard about it. Sure. I invited yeah. her over to the house. Mm. I said, and nobody, I let the staff off for the day. And I said, you know, if you're going to come, I like steak. Let's have something. Oh, well, you like steak. Da, da, da. I cooked and we were sitting at the table having our dialogue and everything. Sure. I told her, I know about you. I know about people like you and you know, good. Da, 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 da. So and she says, oh, you have a beautiful home. Right. She's looking around. <laughs> she said, especially your bedroom. I'm like, like yes, I started choking. Oh, yes, I remember that. I started series. choking. Yes. Most people wow. have already seen it now and it's so yes. it's not a, 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 right. a, a spoiler alert, but right. I ended up dying. Right. Oh, she would not even give me water. I'm like, Trying to reach for the water. She's sitting there looking. That was her opportunity. Mm -hmm. right. So I did that episode. And the kind of the whole basis of the show was based around That's who right. did it, who killed me. And, and then right. it led to other things. You know, it. Uh, uh, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs was yeah. my husband. Wonderful. And um, Paula right. J. Parker. Uh I mean, there's so many wonderful people and actors in that right. series, right. Yes. and it has gone on. This five five mm -hmm. seasons now. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a, it's a fifth. They yeah. did call me back. Yeah, they called me back. So I was a, a apparition. Okay. I came back to haunt some people. <laughs> right. Okay. Done you wrong. I did a scene with uh, um, 
Lisa Ray McCoy, because yeah. she ended up being with my husband. Mm-hmm. Larry had gone through a few women mm-hmm. since yes. I died. <laughs> <laughs> but I did that, and I'm, I'm in two more episodes, that one, and they're both in season five. Right. So you can watch that. So yeah. I was a part of that show. I've seen season five. I love all you of did. it. I just think that they should have had you stay exactly. maybe undercover Perhaps you really didn't die, and they just bring you back. Well, they had the funeral and everything, so it couldn't have been that undercover. But, you know, one thing leads to another, and hopefully, you know, some people, the right people are looking at it, watching it, will have me for something else. You know, that's how it happens. Roll balls, snowballs, roll balls, snowballs. (laughs) Hologram, maybe. Yeah, yeah, hologram. (laughs) What are some of the pearls of wisdom that you would give to somebody young starting out in the business? Because... You've gone through these um, phases of your career where you've really achieved great success and continue to be just as vibrant and just as lovely and down to earth, literally and figuratively. And that seems to be a challenge, uh, to say the least, when you're pulled in so many different directions mm-hmm. over a course of you know years. That is very true, you know, because I'm so grounded, me personally, because of my upbringing mm-hmm. and having been raised in a little small town in Girard, Ohio, right. and, you know, I couldn't wait to get out, sure. but, you know, I always reflect on my wonderful mm-hmm. mother and my dad. He was a hard worker. He worked at the steel mills, and mm-hmm. I had four brothers, but we were such a family, a close-knit family, and the, you know, neighbors surrounding that, and right. my other relatives, my Aunt Marguerite and Aunt Betty, Uncle Howard, Uncle Paul, and everybody, right. mm-hmm. you know, so... uh it really helped ground me, mm-hmm. and when I came out to California, I just really brought a lot of that with me uh-huh. and never got the big head about other things that I was doing because, you know, what is given should be taken away. Just as soon as you get it, you better be careful. Right. But for people and young starlets, guys and girls coming out here or even in the business, mm-hmm. and I know it's been said so many times that, you know, first of all, Kind of recognize and know what you want if you really want to be in this business. It Mm. is not as easy as you think or as hard as you think. Mm. It can be what you make it. You Mm. must, you need to study. You can go online and take some courses and, you know, do some workshops Mm. and really look into the business because it's feast or famine. And, but uh, perseverance is great. Perseverance is great. You got to persevere, persevere. There's a thin line between uh, somebody mm-hmm. bugging you to death and being <laughs> persistent and perseverance, right. but you have to keep going if you believe it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. sometimes that no, saying mm-hmm. no, is the best thing you could hear. Because mm-hmm. if you do, if you don't believe that no is true, you're gonna make it, change it around into mm-hmm. a yes, mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. I can. Mm-hmm. Prove people wrong. Right. But you better have some talent to back it up. Because <laughs> if you suck, <laughs> you ain't going to. I mean, really, in it's reality, true. you know, but take some courses and classes and get some critiques, some really good critiques from people who have, or of, of the profession. Maybe not from your friends and stuff right, if you're doing some reading and right. uh, different things of that nature. And, you know, there there are several um, casting sites that, People can get on Mm -hmm. of all ages, colors, creed, Mm -hmm. everything. Because believe it or not, the casting directors are looking for you as much as you are looking to get into a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the L.A. casting, casting now. I mean, a casting network, um, uh, frontier casting, Mm -hmm. uh, actors access. Mm -hmm. All of these, uh, you can go online and join, put in your profile, your photos. You mm-hmm. don't have to have an agent, which is mm-hmm. good. You can yes. freelance and do your own thing mm-hmm. and submit yourself because you'll be in a certain category. And then when the casting comes up, it falls into the alg- algorithm and they'll send you a notice, say, hey, you're perfect for this part. And would you like to audition for it? Or hopefully you can get in to do the audition, mm-hmm. uh, home mm-hmm. auditioning. Now, right, right. since the pandemic, right. Right. you know, self-auditioning yeah. tape has become the thing, yeah. which at first was kind of strange and weird and stuff. And you have to set your background up and get your little camera ready and your mm-hmm. lighting. 
And they, they're making it so much easier now and accessible just to submit yourself from home, do the right. full, do the profile, right. do your name, and, <laughs> and then read. You can read the lines and put up a, something in front of you so you don't have to memorize Technology's them. Technology is amazing. And I love <laughs> it. True, true, true. I hate auditioning. I'm really yeah. not that good at auditioning mm -hmm. people. Right. But at home, you can take a couple of takes yes. yeah. and send the best right. one in. You could critique yourself <laughs> so and run exactly. it back mm -hmm. as when. You go in for a real one-on-one -on -one audition. You don't have that privilege at that exactly. time to do that. One shot. Right, make it or break it. And one there shot you go. Yeah, sometimes right. the casting <laughs> people will work with you, say, hey, bring it down a little bit. Try it again. They'll give you a few, t you know, different tries to right. go at it. So, you know, even get in front of the mirror and practice right. your lines. Look at yourself. Right. But not even that, now that we have uh, technology, what they... You know, cameras on your phone. Right, sure. Tape on your yourself. desktop. Laptop. Yeah, on your desktop. Tape right. yourself and look back at yourself. See right. what you see. See how you like it. And the main thing is to be believable. That's right. Believable. That's right. If you don't believe yourself and you're in that character, you can critique it as much as you want for certain little idiosyncrasies or different things, but... If you don't believe that you're little Miss Marianne from the liquor store and you went in there and you're getting ready to kill somebody, <laughs> sure. or you're like you're the president of the United States right. and you're right. very astute and you're looking at somebody delivering those lines, and if you look at it and see it, because usually we're our hardest critics, yes, we are. That's and so if true. you don't believe it, nobody's going to believe you. Great, you got to believe you. So. Be believable and be natural for the most part. See, that's, this is great advice. You this have to be natural, lesson, but especially then, for those who yeah, are in, natural, coming but up be, in the business. You have to be diverse and be able to change up if they tell you, hey, switch, do yes. a crying. Sure. Be happy with it. Say sure. the same sure. lines. Sure. Be energetic. Sure. Be a little more low key with the <laughs> same lines, same <laughs> atmosphere, right, same right. thing. But, you know, you have to be able to learn how to snap it on and off and do it. Right. I love it. I mean, that's just like yeah. the best yeah. advice as we close out. I'm just like, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. So here's something in relationship to most women want to know and men and people in general. How do you keep yourself so beautiful I Monday know. through Sunday? What is your health regimen? How do you? Oh, boy. I'm going to take some notes. Uh -huh. yes, we're taking notes. Well, you know so. what? I drink a lot of water. Okay. I do. And I do. I, I drink my wine. I'll have my little cocktails mm -hmm. every now and then. Okay. Not, not a lot. But, you know, stay moisturized. Mm -hmm. Moisturize and, and hydration. Oh. So yes. important I agree. for your skin, for your mind, mm -hmm. for your whole body. You know, so that is some of those are some of the things I do. And I just, I use kind of different products. Right. I, I'm given so many products sometimes when I do these <laughs> golf tournaments right. or if I do the rock, walk the red carpet at some mm -hmm. events. And I've, mm -hmm. I've tried so much. Right. I believe in, there's a thing called um, skin. Um, what's it called? Not diff, um, diffusion or um, where you use a couple of different things and not the same thing. Right. Right. And they say sometimes some things you work are used for maybe four or five months it might right. start working and then it might settle in. You want to uh, confuse your skin or your okay. tone and try something a little different right. and then let that set in and do different products. I'm using Olay right now okay. Okay. and I do like it. I think Olay it's really safe. good. Yeah, Olay is good. And you know, the eyes are usually the worst things to go. And, you know, I've had a few little Botox and stuff here and there, right. but uh, nothing now. I'm like, uh, you, you know. You need to do a commercial on Olay. You need, we need to. I should. Hello. And you know what really yes. teased me off yes. when mm -hmm. they have some of these commercials for and these younger girls yes. under 40, mm -hmm. 50, even under 50. Yes. Uh, show me why their skin looks so doggone great. Of course, because your ass is 50. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, show me somebody 60, 70 years That's old, right. 80. Like that. sure. That's they right. have them sure. every now That's and then. Right. Right, but but something enough. like, oh, it's called ageism. Did. So we got to knock right. that. Yeah. Exactly. And out. even some of these young yes. um, artists. Uh, uh, singers and young people, rappers and ladies and stuff that do and show their little Instagram. So I'm using so and so right, right now and I'm putting up. Right. You look great Girl, you anyway. Look 35. You're, you're, you're 25, 25 so right? Beauty, so much. Right. At 25, we're just like, oh my God, our skin is But stay moisturized and, yeah. and drink a lot yes, of water yeah. and spray, spritz your face mm -hmm. with uh, some mm -hmm. moisturizer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. of course, use sunscreen every time, every chance you get, you right. know, do that. Right. Yes, and I, I appreciate you because we always want to know the health side That's with it. all of the amazing power player lifestyle guests because people want to know how does she do it? 
And you know what? My attitude is always so upbeat. I agree. Attitude. It really is. Attitude (laughs) is really essential for your overall health. I rarely ever, hardly ever, 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 ever (laughs) get sick. Yeah. Really, I don't, my, and my family as well, because there are a lot of good things you can take to help prevent it. But keep your body, once again, drink water, water as much as you can, and just have a good positive attitude. You know, yeah. even when you think you're sick or you may be a little down and out and you right. want to go lay right. down and you're Pick laying in the bed, get your butt up <laughs> out of bed. Right. Seriously, get yeah. out, get those sure. endorphins going That's and right. get your body moving because you got yeah. a healthy um, products in your body that can yeah. you can self heal. Yeah. You can heal yourself yeah. if you think and tell yourself you're sick. You're gonna be sick. <laughs> right, sure. You say I walk around. I'm not sick. I'm not <laughs> sick. Drink that hot tea. Right. Get that Take lemon. Right. 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 Grandma told us everything we needed. Wow. To no, and Let's honey, not forget it. and honey, ain't that right? <laughs> cinnamon. Oh God, it, take sure. cinnamon. Oh. Yes. Thank you right. <laughs> for taking the time to be a part of our Power of Pot talks because that's so important. And thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you.